On to the next presentation, um, it's, it's great to see that coming here from LA. He has a couple of truly outstanding blog posts on, um, well, benchmarking and profiling and uh, the implications of that. And today he talks about how the data set size impacts that. And uh, just as a proof of concept, he sent me a PDF that was so large that it uh, basically popped my uh, mailer down. But now, uh, <laughs> now we have that Also, is there any uh, open seats? Try to at least make them available to people who are standing up. Come on down, come on down, take them, take them. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. So 20 years ago, I was doing physics and working in a bank. And 10 years ago, I moved to California to do what nowadays is called data science. And I also am an army cop in LA. And my employer has nothing to do with this talk. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, using R with largest data sets. Everyone has heard of big data, it's a huge hype. And the uh, conventional wisdom is that you need uh, to spend a lot of money, buy a lot of servers, build a cluster, run Hadoop, or lately Spark on it. But uh, using these big data tools for data analysis is uh, still pretty cumbersome and painful. And uh, in this talk, I will argue that uh, you don't need to do that. So I will argue that most people, most of the time, work with data sets that uh, fit in uh, RAM of a single server. So you can uh, just use R and you are better off. So how much RAM can we get? You can get 100 gigs for uh, less than $1,000. You can go now and buy online a server with a terabyte, of, a terabyte of RAM or even more. Or you can go to one of the cloud providers and get right now 250 gigabytes of RAM. And very soon, this uh, Monster X1 instance will be available to everyone. I got my hands on uh, one of these uh, last <laughs> week. And it looks like this, 120 cores. Two terabytes for thirteen dollars per hour. <laughs> so, how large are the data sets we've been uh, analyzing? There is this excellent uh, website, KD Nudgets, started by the data mining community like 15 years ago. So, they've been doing surveys for the last 10 years, asking what is the largest data set that you've been uh, data mining, and. Uh, I combined all these 10 years of data into a little GitHub repo, and here is the cumulative distribution function uh, over uh, a few number of years. And before we look at the data set sizes, uh, I'm also interested in how, how fast this big data is growing. So you see that the CDF is uh, pretty linear in the middle, so you can smooth, this out, smooth it out. And uh, if you feed some linear model from the coefficients, you can figure out that data set sizes in this survey, they've been growing about 20% per year. So how fast is can RAM keep uh, with this 20% growth rate? So I use as a proxy the RAM of the largest EC2 instance you could find uh, in the same number of years. So if you... Uh, estimate uh, the growth rate, then you get at least 50% increase in RAM over the last 10 years per year. So apparently RAM is growing faster than, uh, than uh, the data sets people are actually doing analytics on. So that means that what didn't fit in RAM a number of years ago might fit in RAM now. Uh, so the actual sizes, the median size, reported here was uh, 30 gigabytes, which fits pretty easily now in RAM, and the number of people have uh, larger data sets. And I also asked this on Twitter and got kind of similar answers. So there is a number of people who work with terabytes of data, but for a large number of people, the data set sizes are, are way smaller. So I will assume in the start that we're working with uh, uh, gigabytes of data, maybe 10 gigabytes, maybe 100 gigabytes. And uh, I think even these numbers reported here are a little bit uh, an overestimate of the data set size. <laughs> so, 
I think people, <laughs> people like to brag about the big size of their things. So. <laughs> so, what? How can we deal with 10 gigabytes of data in R? So it used to be really painful even to read the uh, the data from a CSV file a number of years ago, but. Uh, We've been improving R a lot, so even the read CSV is way better now. You can use data tables after read to read the data. You can read uh, uh, 10 gigabytes in a minute or two. And uh, these guys at Wise.io just uh, uh, open sourced a C++ library that can uh, parse uh, uh, CSV files in parallel a few weeks ago. and. Uh, uh, they, they already have a Python wrapper, and hopefully somebody will wrap this uh, in R. Um, and then we can get maybe a five times speed up on multi-core machines. So once you have the data in R, you would probably do some kind of exploratory data analysis. So what takes time, you would think that aggregates and joins on, on large data sets uh, would be slow in R. Uh, they are actually not. So I was, uh, there is this GitHub I put some uh, quick measurements of uh, aggregates and joints, and data table fares pretty well. So in a couple of seconds, you can aggregate joints or join gigabytes of data. And uh, actually, the big data system fare not so well. Like Hive is about, which is the uh, Hadoop's uh, answer to SQL, is about 100 times slower, and they're not able to to make it faster. Spark is at least 10 times faster than Hadoop, and I think that's one of the success, but it's still uh, about an order of magnitude slower than the parallel databases or, or even data table. So, yeah, you can throw more money into the problem, but it's not gonna help too much. So, one problem we'll be running into if we keep uh, increasing the data sets uh, sizes we are working with R is this thing that in, uh, currently in R you cannot have a data frame that has more than two billion rows. So hopefully someone uh, in R core will look at this. And just as they did a great job in making data frames faster, so starting from 3.1, uh, there are much less copying uh, when working with data frames. And sometimes this means a speed up of a thousand or more. So what if you still have bigger data? So hopefully that data is in some database, and I'm a big fan of columnar databases, and some of these are parallel databases, so you can scale way beyond the, the uh, a terabyte or 10 terabytes of data. Uh, and you can read the data into R from a database pretty fast, at least as fast as you can read the CSV file. My uh, favorite topic, machine learning, I've been benchmarking uh, some of the most accurate uh, uh, algorithms for bina binary classification in their most uh, widely used open source implementations, such as R packages, Python, Scikit-Learn, H2O, HDBoost, Spark. And there is a huge difference in uh, performance. So, uh, for instance, for Gradient boosting machines, which are uh, one of the most accurate algorithms for a lot of data sets. Ars GBM, which is a pretty old and single core implementation, fares pretty well. Uh, Spark is uh, very slow and it uses uh, also about 10 times more memory than it should. And then uh, <laughs> the top of the line currently is XGBoost and H2O. And, uh, there is a reason for that, because this has been designed by people who know about high performance computing, and it's not about big data, it's all this machine learning is more about high performance computing. How you fetch the data so that uh, the CPU cache can, uh, you can keep the data in the CPU cache and you, you can get speed ups of orders of magnitude. And we are very lucky that both of the systems are available from R, it's just an install packages from Tran, and you can use them right away. But sometimes it's not about the tools or the models. So in many big data projects, I've heard of people fitting linear models, but 
if you add more data, it's, it's the, some, in some cases, the linear models don't improve. So uh, you're actually better off uh, fitting some nonlinear model, and sometimes even on, uh, on a smaller data set, you can uh, just taking a 1% sample, you, you can get better results than with a median linear model. So the other thing is you know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you have to know statistics. You have to know, you have to have domain knowledge. And uh, you have to know all those things that use for your brain. It's not just about the tools. But of course, it's also about the tools. And R is great. I think I illustrated in a few ways in this very short talk uh, uh, how you can uh, deal with largest data sets in R. And there are a lot of other things. Some of them are here that uh, tell you how great R is, and uh, you can hear a lot more at this conference. So I, I think distributed computing is, uh, is overhyped, and uh, it's kind of an overkill for the data set sizes that most people are dealing with. And they also lack features, especially in modeling, and they don't have very good implementation yet. So, you can decide, do you want to spend all your time <laughs> fighting the tools, or you want to have some time for data analysis? And I'm not saying that these big data tools are all bad, so of course companies have lots of data. You need to store them in a database or in a big data system. You need to do ETL, so use it just for that. But your job is to look at the data and uh, come up with some value or insight uh, or make more money for your company. So uh, use the right tools and uh, do it productively. So here, a summary of uh, uh, these tips I just gave in this talk. So just to repeat a little bit, uh, get lots of RAM. I think now this is the most important. Use high performance R packages. Uh, do some data reduction in your database. So uh, hopefully you have your data in a kernel storage or in uh, a big data system. Do some aggregates in joints there and refine your data and then work with that uh, in R. And also uh, let the engineers do all this uh, data storage and uh, ETL. And, and use your brain, don't switch it off. So. <laughs> and if nothing works, yeah, sure, use the uh, big data tools. So the slides uh, will be online. I scheduled a tweet at 11.06, so <laughs> go to my Twitter and uh, get the link on the, to the slides. So I think I finished a little bit uh, earlier, but we have time to come for questions. What's your favorite uh, columnar database? Oh, um, so if you go to this repo, then uh, you can see uh, ModelDB is unfortunately the only open source columnar <coughs> database in this field. So I'm a big fan of open source. Uh, at the company where I work, the only thing that's not open source that I'm using is the columnar database. And unfortunately, the license uh, terms for all these databases, they prohibit you to publish benchmarks or disclose benchmarks. So that's why they they, they, they are here shown as MPB1, MPB2, and so forth. Isn't Wojcik on the one? But the, the good ones are, uh, and this is, oh, this is on camera. So I, I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but he mentioned, uh, so the, the options are pretty much vertical, redshift, and a couple of others, commercial ones. Yes? How does copy on write semantics make it very hard to do any kind of non-trivial manipulation in, um, in memory? Can you suggest more questions? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it depends on your problem. So I kind of like uh, Hadley's talk and what he's suggesting that that most of his things are very good to solve 90% of your problems, and this is the same. So data table will help you probably solve 90% of your problems, and for the rest, you have to really find some 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 tools 
that, that are working. But you might have some problems that are not structured in <coughs> this way. So uh, yeah, yeah, you have to go problem by problem and kind of uh, look at the tool. So one thing that I find it really ironic is that we work in the data field and very few people are comparing tools and collecting data and uh, doing some analytics of how these tools are working. Most people, they just take, your, take their favorite tool and even if it's a hundred times slower, they just keep using it. Very true, very true. We have time. I mean, just uh, just we want to use the time since it, between some of the presentation we have to swap. So, uh, so the, and we're talking about data science, and what about the computer? I mean, some algorithm might be very complex. Uh, complex but if the scale is uh, if the complexity is uh, in the order of n square or the n cube, then it's uh, very uh, a very long time to compute, even for gigabytes. Yeah. Yeah, again, in 90% of the problems, with a little bit of thinking and problem solving, you can kind of solve the problem. So if it's uh, embarrassingly parallel, you can distribute it on node. There will, be, there will be no overhead of communication. And uh, so on small data, that's the, the way what usually people do. There is spin up a lot of uh, cluster of computers, and you can use R, and uh, it will take CPU cycles on each of them. But and put the results together at the end. But the machine learning, uh, most machine learning uh, uh, algorithm, they scale, uh, they scale linearly, except the super attractor machine. Yeah. Maybe one more? Do you have any comments on the GPU computing? Yeah, sure. For so for deep learning, yeah, use GPUs. Uh, it seems like most of the uh, good implementations they, they, in GPUs. Yeah. If you are if you are doing recur uh, RNNs or TNNs, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So much.